This is WCIA 3 News at noon. Good afternoon. I'm Alex Cordetti. A woman was killed when she walked into the path of a semi-truck. It's one of today's top stories. It happened on I-74 in Champaign near the Neal Street exit. The 33-year-old's name has not been released yet. The truck driver, a 53-year-old man from Wisconsin, has not been ticketed at this time. The crash happened at around 12.30 this morning, and police are still investigating. Springfield police want help identifying three suspects in a commercial burglary. This is new at noon for you. It happened at 2.30 in the morning last month at Simply Mac in the 2800 block of South Veterans Parkway. The three suspects got away with nearly $15,000 in Apple computer products in less than a minute. They were dressed head to toe in dark clothing with hoods and their faces were covered as you can see there. They left in a small red car. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers. Also new for you, a Bellwood man was arrested in Mattoon for domestic battery. Police say 47-year-old Michael Egans pushed a woman down and punched her in the face multiple times. That happened during a domestic dispute. No word yet on the woman's condition. And caller ID led authorities to a man suspected of making a fake bomb threat. Police say 28-year-old Mikhail Erickson, pictured here, called two hospitals in Decatur Tuesday night. He told workers that the buildings were going to blow up. Both St. Mary's Hospital and Decatur Memorial received similar calls within minutes of each other. Police tracked Erickson down and arrested him. Urbana police are still investigating the bomb threats made to Walmart and to Carl last week. Nothing was found at either location. And a ceremony for the third trooper hit and killed in the line of duty this year was held in Springfield yesterday. Trooper Gerald Ellis died after being hit the wrong way by a driver at the end of March. WCI 3's Gabrielle Franklin was there as leaders revealed his name on the state police memorial wall. When we dedicated this um, memorial in October, I was just talking to the governor about it. None of us, none of us could have possibly imagined the loss that the state police would have to bear in the coming months. Three troopers killed in the line of duty on Illinois roads this year. Trooper Chris Lambert died in January after he was hit by a car while assisting another vehicle. Trooper Brooke Jones' story's death came two months later when a tractor trailer hit her while she was inspecting another truck. And Trooper Gerald Ellis, struck and killed after a wrong way driver, hit him head on. His name is now number 70 on a wall of fallen state police officers. For all who have put so much effort into this memorial, and for all those who have gathered here for the third time in nearly as many months at this sacred place, I say that not just as a thank you, but as a prayer that after today, we will never have to do this again. Ellis's wife, Stacy, says he would have been honored to be immortalized on the wall, but Governor Pritzker says the state is forever grateful for his service. Today we emblazon your husband's name permanently, not just to this wall, but also in all of our hearts, because Jerry made the world a safer place for your girls and for you and for children all across our state and their families. Ellis is survived by his wife and two daughters, Zoe and Kaylee. His wife says the community has supported her through this very difficult time. The Illinois State Police have been in service since 1922. The agency's Memorial Park in Springfield honors officers who've lost their lives dating back to 1924. In addition to keeping up with the park, one of the missions of the State Police Heritage Foundation is to collect donations for families whose loved ones were killed in the line of duty. And a Champaign fire chief has new duties. It's new at noon for you today. This morning at a ceremony in Atlanta, Georgia, Chief Gary Ludwig was installed as president and chair of the board of directors for the International Association of Fire Chiefs. He will serve a one-year term and remain on the board as a past president. Mayor Finan and mayors, uh, members rather of Champaign's firefighter union were all at the ceremony. Ludwig says he's honored to represent the leadership of fire service and plans on bragging about Champaign's outstanding fire department and city. And State Senator Tom Cullerton will no longer chair the Senate Labor Committee. That's after federal prosecutors charged him with embezzling money from a local labor union. But the demotion won't hurt his pocketbook. Senate President John Cullerton, his cousin, appointed him to chair the Veterans Committee instead. Last week's indictment accused Tom Cullerton of scheming with a Teamsters boss. That's to collect hundreds of thousands of dollars in union salary and benefits he did not earn. He plans to fight those charges in court. 
And services at Willard Airport are being expanded but will not benefit all travelers. Flight Star is entirely funding a new state-of-the-art U.S. Customs and Border Protection General Aviation Facility. It will allow international flights to arrive directly to Willard. That's without having to pass customs at another airport. However, it will not serve the facility's commercial operations, but Flight Star's president, Bill Gianetti, says it will make the airport a more attractive destination for corporate as well as chartered flights. That should be operational in early 2020. An Indicator police officer celebrated his final send-off. What do we Thank you for your service. Officer Corey Barrows decided to have a little fun on his final page here. That post, Jack, believe it or not, now has over 62,000 likes and shares on Facebook. And his song of choice was Footloose. He's been with the department for over 30 years. He deserves so. to, uh, to jump around and dance like that's that. That's what I'm saying. That's the way I'd want to go out if I was making my last call. Yeah. What song would you pick? Uh, probably Toto by, uh, oh, that's a good by one. Africa. Man, yeah. I, I think maybe girls just want to have fun. It's a good one, too. I think so. Yeah. Classics, really. What are we looking at outside right now? We've got uh, chances for a little bit of some rain later on this afternoon. This is the look from uh, Bloomington on our roofing dog, Inet. So coming up, we are going to be talking about some isolated storm chances this afternoon, as well as a pretty dry forecast the rest of the week, we're thinking. And uh, more in the way of heat coming up next. All right, still to come on WCI 3 News at noon. It's an Illinois State Fair tradition, the Butter Cow. We're going to give you a little history on it. That's coming up next.